we're just going to jump right into it tonight before i pray i'm just going to read our scripture for tonight you can follow along on the screen we're wrapping up our mini series inside of our big series called romans and we're looking at romans chapter 12 starting in verse 14 bless those who persecute you bless and do not curse rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn live in harmony with one another do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position do not be conceited Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. God, I thank you tonight. I thank you as we reflect on, as we sing this song on the cross and the sacrifice that you made. I thank you that you made that for us, that that you love us so much that you made that sacrifice. I pray that we would return that love to you, that we would return that love to every person we come in contact with, that we would be people that are filled with hope, that it's overflowing and people around us are affected by that, that they're affected by the love that we show. God, I pray you'd open up our hearts, our minds, that you would speak something new to each and every one of us, speak something new to me tonight, God. I pray you'd speak through me and that we would receive what you have for us. And the whole church said, come on, the whole church said, can you turn to someone and tell them that you are glad to see them as you find your seat tonight? Is the six o'clock service awake tonight? Are you awake? Anyone sleepy? The, the rain make you a little sleepy? The hour of sleep you lost last night make you sleepy? Hope, hopefully the light outside as you came in, it's gonna be light for a little bit longer. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful tonight that it is officially March Madness season. Are there any March Madness fans in the room tonight? Oh, it's the most wonderful time of the year if you ask me. It's my favorite. But tonight, like I said, we're going to be continuing in Romans, wrapping up Romans chapter 12 with what I just read. And this book, this this passage is being written to the believers in Rome. And during this time, it's important for you to know that Rome was uh, getting hostile for believers. It was a hard place for the believers at this time. It was going to get much harder for them to live out their Christian values. And maybe as we talk about a place that's hard to live out Christian values that reminds you of somewhere that we live today. A hard place to to live out values, a place that is hostile towards Christians that, that says maybe they don't love people but they hate people. But can I encourage you that living in a world that doesn't accept that is hostile towards us isn't a new thing. This has happened before. God knows how to handle this. God knows what's to come. You, you can trust in him. The question is, and the question I want to look at tonight with you guys is this, is how do we show love when we are under pressure from an unbelieving world? How do we show love when we are under pressure from an unbelieving world? First, I want to look at what is written in here. There's four commands that it says. Verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Verse 19, do not take revenge Verse 21, do not be overcome by evil. What this is telling me, what I get out of this as I read this, is that our love should be independent from how other people treat us. Our love to them doesn't, it's, it's not based on how they treat us. We love them no matter what. When they curse, we bless. When they hate, we love. When they avenge, we will not. We forgive. These words are easy to read but honestly, they're impossible to live. It's, this verse is almost an impossible verse to do. You, you cannot do this except by one thing, by being connected with Jesus, by being in a relationship with Jesus, by reminding yourself every single day, just like we did here tonight, that, that God loves me so much that I need to reflect that love. See, when we're connected with Jesus, we have an endless capacity to show other people love. 
And that's what we need. We need to be able to show others love. So I wanna ask you this question tonight. Do you love people? Do you love people? Maybe you're saying, well, of course I love people. I love my friends. I love most of my family. I love my nice neighbors that bake me cookies. I love those people. And then, and then there's some other people that are in the world. And <clears throat> this one's my favorite. I love them with the love of the Lord. Right? Which we all know is Christianese for I hate your guts. But I'm supposed to love you. So I'm just going to love you with the love of the Lord. Can I challenge you tonight to truly love someone that you love with the love of the Lord? To really love them to really care for people. Do you love people? And maybe I need to ask this, is who do you need to start loving tonight? Maybe it is someone from work. Maybe it is a family member. Maybe it is a neighbor. Maybe it's a gender, a race. Maybe it's someone from a different political party or a different religion. But who do you need to start loving tonight? I want that to sit with you for a little bit as we walk through this tonight. But before we jump any further, do you mind if I uh, make good on a promise that I have? Is that all right with you? This weekend as I was preparing to preach for tonight, I was uh, talking to my son Barrett and he was asking me what I was doing and I told him I'm, I'm getting ready to preach. And he said, I wanna preach with you. So I said, okay. So Barrett, do you wanna come up here and preach with me for a minute? All right, come here. Is that all right with you if he comes and preaches for just a moment? I told him he could, come on. Uh oh. Oh. Do you want me to hold you? I had a feeling that was going to happen. For those of you on live stream, if you cannot hear, he is crying over in the front row right now. Great. How many parents are in the room tonight? Any parents in the room? How many know that? As a parent, there is nothing that my son can do that would make me stop loving him. There's nothing he can do. No matter how many fits he throws, no matter how many arguments we might have, no matter how many times we're in the store and he wants a sucker and I say no and he starts screaming and it makes a big scene, you know what it's like to have a toddler. No matter how many times that happens, I'm not going to stop loving him. No matter what the future may hold, although we pray that nothing's gonna come of that, now he's gotta go. But in the future, I pray that, that he follows God. I pray that he doesn't go down the wrong path. But even if he chooses to live a different lifestyle, I'm still going to love my son. I will still have a love for him. And I remember when we first had him, and, and maybe you're in the same place, when you became a parent, I had this realization when I first saw my son, how much God loves me. Because there's this unconditional love when you hold a child, your child for the first time. There's this this love that's like, there's nothing you could ever do that would make me stop loving you. And to realize that God with, with Jesus sacrificed his son for me. And I thought there's, I wouldn't, I would have a hard time sacrificing Barrett for someone that I like, let alone people that are going to reject it, that are going to make fun of it, that don't care about it. That's, that's an unconditional love, that God loves each and every one of us so much that he sacrificed his son. And here's, Here's something that that will make you think and and make you realize God's love is that God loves you just as much as he loves, let's say, a terrorist. His love for for each person is is endless and it and it and it continues. And his he sacrificed Jesus for each and every person. And if God loves each person like that, shouldn't I love them like that? If let's let's talk about like this. If with my son Barry, if you love me, if you have a relationship with me, you're going to love my son. You might get annoyed with him. You might get frustrated with him. But you would love him if you love me. 
if we truly love God, shouldn't we truly love his children? If you truly loved me, you would love my son. You wouldn't probably say negative things about him. You wouldn't post negative things on social media about him. So if we truly love God, then we're gonna truly love his children. Just a reminder, Joe Biden and Donald Trump are God's children. Do we truly love people? Does our actions of how we love people, do people see that love coming out of us? So we look at, okay, I need to love people. But how? how? How do I love people, especially people that I don't necessarily like, people that I maybe have stepped away from? How do I love them? Paul's telling us here two simple things on how do we love people. And if you're taking notes tonight, the first way to love people is to sympathize. We sympathize. Look at verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. We sympathize. We, we emotionally connect with people wherever they are at. If they're up, we're up. If they're down, we're down. If they're crying, we're crying. If they're laughing, we're laughing. That's what love tries to do. That's what Jesus did. What's the shortest passage in the whole Bible? Jesus wept. Why was Jesus weeping? Well, because Lazarus was dead. Hold on a second. We're talking about Jesus here, who I'm assuming knew that he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. Could it be that Jesus was crying because he was emotionally connecting with Mary and Martha at that time? He was, he was sympathizing with them. He, he does this, and, and when we sympathize with people, we, we build a relationship with them. It, it builds that relationship that can lead to this love. How do we love people? We sympathize, and number two, we harmonize. Harmonize. Verse 17 says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Verse 18, this is my favorite. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Someone say everyone. Now everyone, say everyone. Everyone. Now it's important to remember when this says everyone, in English that would sound like we're supposed to live at peace with every single person that exists. But remember, uh, the original context of this, the word everyone would actually just mean I'm just kidding, it means everyone, right? We're talking about everyone. Not just live in peace with people who act like you, who people, with people who talk like you, who like the same things you like, who go to the same church you go to. Don't live in peace with people who pray to the same God that you pray. Live in peace with everyone. Everyone, let me ask you this question tonight. Are you a peacemaker? Because we are to live at peace with everyone. Now let me clarify this for a moment. Living at peace does not mean, well, I'm at peace and I'm around everyone, so like that, that's what it's supposed to be, right? I don't care what people think about me, which is honestly a good place to be at, to be at a place where you don't care, you're not worried about what people think about you because it takes having thick skin to be a bold witness sometimes if anyone's ever been a witness to someone before. It takes having some thick skin. But sometimes we get caught up in, I don't care what people think about me, so I'm just gonna say whatever I wanna say, and that's just gonna be that. But this is challenging us. This is challenging me that I have to live at peace with everyone, that everything I say, every comment I make, every post I do, every like that I have on social media should be an effort to live at peace with everyone, should be an effort to love everyone like God loves me. So how do we do this? This is the hard part. You have to initiate it. To live at peace with everyone, to live in harmony with everyone, you have to initiate it. Don't be this person. Well, I'll, I'll forgive them when they initiate it. They wronged me first, so I'm going to wait for them to talk to me, and then I'm going to do it. No, no, we initiate it. We reach out first. We make that effort to live at peace first. And understand, in order to live at peace, both parties have to want it. And sometimes, no matter how hard we try, people won't accept that peace. People won't accept that love. But remember, just because they don't receive 
the love, they don't receive the peace as we initiate, that doesn't give us the right to just say, oh, well, forget you then. I'm gonna say whatever I wanna say. No, we still continue to fight for peace no matter how they respond to us initiating it. So we know that we are called to love who? Everyone. Someone say everyone. Everyone say everyone. Who are we called to love? We're called to love everyone. We're called to live in peace with everyone. Every single person. Continue reading because it's going to get a little more difficult here. In general, loving everyone and living at peace with everyone is hard to do. But then he takes it a step further and he says this in verse 19. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy, someone say enemy, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you'll heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So not only are we called to live at peace with everyone, but we're also supposed to love our enemies. You say, I don't have enemies. What are you talking about? If you say you don't have enemies, there's one of two things probably. You're either dead or you're a liar, okay? When we really evaluate, we all, I'm sure, have enemies because a believer who seeks to obey God is going to have enemies. Jesus had enemies. As they traveled, as, as Paul and, and them all traveled, they encountered enemies who, who opposed their work. But unfortunately, some believers have enemies because they lack love and patience, not because they are faithful in their witness. Where do your enemies come from? Because there's a difference in sharing the offense of the cross and being an offensive Christian. You will have enemies. Be encouraged by that because if you are doing it right, you will have enemies. But also if we're doing it wrong, we're gonna have enemies. Turn here and say, you're gonna have enemies. Isn't that encouraging? It's like, oh, I'm gonna have enemies. I'm gonna love people, guess what? That means you have enemies. I'm going to be a jerk to people. You're going to have some serious enemies. We're going to have enemies. And we have to learn to have enemies, have to learn to live a life with enemies because of the truth that we speak. If we're going to have enemies, I want, it, I want my enemies to be enemies because I'm speaking truth to them. Not because I'm being a jerk to them, but because I'm speaking truth. And sometimes they receive the truth as being a jerk, but we have to share truth And we have to be careful how we do it. We have to do it with love. We have to do it with grace. When we look at Jesus, Jesus was full of truth. He was also full of grace. The Bible says he was full of truth and grace. I don't think that that means he was 50% truth and 50% grace making him full, but I think that means he's 100% truth and 100% grace. Lots of people are 100% grace and 0% truth. Others are 100% truth and 0% grace. But grace without truth is meaningless, honestly. If I'm full of grace and I don't have any truth, meaningless. If I'm full of truth and I have no grace, that's just mean. We have to find a balance of, of sharing truth and doing it with love. Sharing truth of what the Bible says but remembering that they are a son, that they are a daughter of God, and that Jesus died for them just the same that he died for me. Therefore, I need to love them with everything inside of me. Full of grace and full of truth. What's the natural response to having an enemy? Getting revenge. Verse 19, though, says, never take revenge. Awesome. Christians should not try to play God and avenge themselves. I love that it says that God's gonna take care of us here. But getting, it's, it's a, getting revenge, it's a, it's a natural response. Well, if they do this to me, I'm gonna do that to them. If they're nice to me, I'm gonna be nice to them. If they're mean to me, I'm gonna be mean to them. Except usually if it's like, if they're mean to me, I'm gonna be mean to them plus a little bit more, right? Like if you, if you punch me and you knock out my tooth, I'm gonna punch you and knock out all your teeth because you did that to me, right? It's, it's this revenge. Because it's fair. 
There's this Chinese proverb that I found that I love, and if you're a parent, you're gonna know that this is revenge. It says, if your neighbor wrongs you, buy each of his children a drum. That's just evil. Returning evil for evil and good for good is how the world lives. But we're called to live different. That when evil is done to us, we return that with good. That when someone's mean to us, we're nice to them. When they hate us, we love them. When they curse us, we bless them. We're called to a higher standard, even though everything within us many times wants to fight back. Wants to say, oh yeah, well you don't even know. Listen to this and tell them exactly how we feel. There's a story of a pastor who was criticized about some things that, that he said and the things that were said about him were both unkind and untrue. And obviously, like any of us, he wanted to fight back. He was ready to go fight back to this person who said these unkind and untrue things. And some wise man told him this, don't do it. Don't fight back. Because if you defend yourself, then the Lord can't defend you. Leave it in his hands. When we try to take revenge on our enemies, we're taking the work away from God. But what he's calling us here is he's calling us to love people and to have faith that he's going to take care of the rest. To love people and have faith that, that he's going to take care of what that person did to you. To love them, even though it doesn't make sense, because he's going to take care of it. All, all your job is, is you just love people and God takes care of the rest. All your job is, is you just post positive things about people and God takes care of the rest. Do you love people? Do people see that love for other people in you? Because you know what happens when we love everyone, and I mean everyone, when you love every single person, when, you're, when your posts are positive, when, when you're constantly giving positive affirmation to people, when your enemy does something to you and you respond with love, people will notice. People will notice. And they will ask, what's different about you? And then we can become a witness in that situation. So I want to ask you again tonight, who do you need to love? If you bow your head and close your eyes, I just want you to think about this question for a minute and really allow God to speak to you. Who do I need to love? Sure there's a name or there's a list of names or lists of people, groups of people coming to mind. And I want to ask you this question in response to that. Who do I need to love? And what does that look like? Just begin to ask God right now. God, reveal to me how that looks. What, what does that look like for me to love this person? Here's how I want to respond tonight. I'm going to pray in just a moment. I'm going to pray over you. And then I've got some questions that are going to come up on the screen. And I want you just to find someone by you. Maybe it's a, a couple people around you. And I just want you to discuss this because how I, how I like to respond to things is not just to have that moment where I hear about it, but also to discuss it and talk about what this looks like. What is God speaking to me right now? But I'm going to pray. And then we're just going to spend some time doing that to close. Jesus, I thank you for your love for us. That you loved us so much that you died on a cross for us. That you died on the cross for every single person because they're your children. I pray that we would recognize your love for them and that we would have love to them. That we would be known as people who love every single person, no matter how they act, no matter how they talk, how they look, that we would love them. And we wouldn't just love them 
with the love of the Lord, but we would truly learn to love people like you love them. God, I thank you that tonight you're speaking to us. Tonight you're challenging us. I pray that for those who have had names, different people pop into their mind, I pray that this week that we would learn how to love them. That enemies that we would normally get revenge on, that we would bless them this week. I pray you would bless this time of discussion with those around us and that you would continue to speak to us through other people. In your name we pray, amen. So there's a list of questions up there. Find someone or a couple people around you and go ahead and talk about those when you're done. You are free to come up and pray or you're free to to go. But I want to make sure that at the very end of this that you take prayer requests and pray together as a group before you go tonight.